In this video, we're going to find the AC steady state response in a circuit where we have sources with different frequencies. This is the first time we've seen something like this. And the thing is, is all of our impedance that rules that we learned about, they depend on omega, the frequency. The thing is, is I have multiple different omegas here. So the, the two Henry inductor, there is not a single impedance number that I could use that would work for the whole circuit. What that means is the only way to handle the circuit is by using superposition. So we're going to go ahead and look at just one source at a time. So this first one, I'm only going to hook up this 10 cosine 2t source. We have our inductor. This source gets removed by becoming an open circuit. We have our resistor, we have our V0. Uh, we have our capacitor. We have our other resistor. And this voltage source becomes zero, which means it's a short. So for this problem, our omega is gonna be two. So we're going to convert everything into phasor versions now. So 10 cosine 2t is 10 angle 0, which is just 10. Now for my inductor, it's j omega l. So that's going to be omega is 2 and l is 2. So we're going to have 4j for the inductor. We have our resistor 1 ohm. V0 plus minus. Then we have our capacitor, and we know the rules for capacitor is negative J over omega C. My omega is 2 again. My C is 0.1. So it's 0.2 in the bottom. Divide by that, it's going to be minus 5J. And then 4 ohms. So at this point, I'm going to do one uh, simplification, the 4 ohm and negative 5j that are in parallel. 1 ohm v0 plus minus. And so we, you know, 4 parallel negative 5j is 4 times negative 5j over 4 plus negative 5j. That's going to be a negative 20j over 4 minus 5j. At this point, we can now use my voltage divider, total voltage times impedance I'm at over the sum of the impedances. And I'll go ahead and do this on my calculator here. 10 times 1 divided by 4j plus 1, minus, and then uh, 20j, divided by 4 minus 5j, and I get 2.15 minus 1.28j, and we're going to convert this into polar coordinates. So we're going to get 2.5 angle negative 30.8 degrees. And this means my V0 of T is going to be 2.5 cosine 2T minus 30.8. So that gives me my first V0 from the first source. And we do have to do these all separately because, again, different frequencies means different phasers, which means you can't combine the phasers together. Now I'm going to do the next source. So this first source becomes a short. I have my inductor. Now this one is a sine. So it's going to be two angle negative 90 there. We have our one ohm resistor. V0, we have our capacitor. I'm going to go straight to phasers this time. 4 ohm, 
this becomes a short. So we know our inductor phasor is J omega L. Omega in this case is five, right? Sine five T and L is two. So we're gonna get a 10 J there. For the capacitor, it's negative J over omega C. This time, omega is five, C is 0.1. It's gonna be negative two J there. So I think I'll do two things here. I will first do, uh, I, actually before I do anything, two negative 90 is the same as negative two J. Now I'm gonna do a source transformation over here. Negative two J times 10 J would be negative 20 J squared, which is the same as just 20. 10 J we have one ohm V zero. And I will go ahead and combine those two that are in parallel over there. So four in parallel with negative two J is going to be four times negative two J over four plus negative two J. So we negative eight J over four minus two J. So now we'll use our voltage divider rule again, total voltage time impedance we're at over the sum of the impedances. And I'll go ahead and put this in my calculator here. And we're gonna get, so divided by 10 J plus one minus fraction eight J divided by four minus two J And I'm getting 0.49 minus 2.28J. Put that into polar notation. We'll be getting 2.3 angle negative 77.9 degrees. So that means this V0 of T is 2.3 cosine 5t minus 77.9 degrees. That gives me my second V0 that we're gonna need to combine together. And then we just need to do one more here. The third one's actually gonna be the easiest because on the third one, the source that we have there is a DC source, which omega is zero. And we know, for example, that when you have a DC source steady state, capacitor becomes an open. And inductor becomes a short. Also, we're turning off the sources, so the voltage source becomes short, current source becomes an open. And this ends up being all we have left. So this one, we can go straight to voltage divider rule. There's only one problem here is that the way the source is, and the way the V0 is drawn, it's actually gonna be a negative five volts times resistance we're at over the sum of the resistances. So there's gonna be a negative one volt there. And so for our final answer, we're gonna combine together everything and we get V0 of T is 2.5 cosine 2T minus 30.8 degrees plus 2.3 cosine 5t minus 77.9 degrees minus one. And that right there is our overall result. As I said, it's important to know that because we had multiple different frequencies in this circuit, the only choice was to use superposition to solve it. You could not solve it all at once because our impedances for both inductors and for capacitors they depend on the value of omega so if you have more than one value of omega it's not going to work out by doing it all at once you have to split it up but once you do that you do three separate analyses and we get our final answer